Hey there guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, it's the crafts of Kenny's wife. Well, I have had multiple requests from multiple viewers who have asked to see the crafts that my wife does. Um, you guys have seen little bits and little snippets of it here and there throughout the show, but you've never really been exposed to, you know, the bulk of it. And that's what we're going to concentrate on today. Some of you may find it interesting, some of you may not, but honestly, the work that she does is absolutely incredible, and it deserves being shown here. And seeing that you guys asked for it, well, you're going to get it. So what I want to start off with today is something that some of you have already seen a bit here on the show. And what that is, is my wife's sea glass pictures. And for this here, she has a bit of an obsession when we go away on vacation looking for sea glass. And sea glass is discarded glass that has ended up in the ocean. And over years and currents, it tumbles this glass through the sea bottom and eventually it ends up back on shore. When it ends up back on shore, it is this frosted, polished, uh, kind of a, a bizarre thing, but it's really beautiful. And my wife has found a way using a rock tumbler to make her own. And what she does is she makes little mosaic pictures of them. So it's not really, I don't know. I don't think I could do it because I don't see the pieces of glass the way that she does. She sees them as shapes of, in this case, say birds, or in this case here, a turtle. So I don't think I could do it, but at the same time, she has a knack and the knack works. And I think it's a really cool effect and it's a, it's a great craft. You guys should really give this a try. But either way, this is one of the things that she enjoys doing, sea glass artwork. One of the other things that my wife loves to do, and although she'll say she's not that good at it, I disagree, is sewing. And whether it be something simple, like say where she made the baby blankets for the doll crib and the doll bed that I made recently here on the show, or whether it be something more uh, elaborate, say like, well, a sock monkey, something cute like that. She does a wonderful job at these. She made teddy bears for years and some of them were just absolutely beautiful. But where her talents really excel is in costume making. And over the years, she has made several costumes. Most of them, in fact, I think all of them now that I think about it, were from here. Not from a pattern or not from uh, someone else's design, but from her head. So she was able to kind of take measurements and and end up with this very usable and very functional and awesome looking costumes. So that in itself is a talent. Um, it's kind of like scroll saw work, but with a needle and thread. It's just incredible stuff. So these costumes have been around for years and years. Um, she makes them, they get recycled through my daughters. They get, my wife wears them. Uh, well, I don't, but <laughs> you know, I don't think I would look that good in a dress, but either way, they're absolutely wonderful, and although she'll tell you, as I said, that she's not that good at it, I don't know. I, I think some of you, just like myself, would completely disagree with that. Now, there are going to be some of you out there that say, come on, Kenny, you've got this shop with all these tools and all this equipment. You can't tell me that she hasn't been out there to do some work. And she has. And you guys saw here on the show where we had a bit of fun making zombie dogs for a Halloween decoration. But as well, she has delved a little bit into woodworking. Now, she used my tutorial and some guidance to make her own marble in a cage or a golf ball in a cage. She just used a marble because she thought it looked a little prettier than a golf ball. And at one point in time, she came out and made this turtle box, which is kind of cool because the shell pivots to uh, expose the interior and give you access to what's inside. Now, here's the thing. 
Uh, my wife took woodworking in school years ago and it was really never her bag. Her biggest pet peeve and her biggest dislike for the craft was sanding. And we had, because I had the same teacher, uh, we had a teacher that pushed, pushed, pushed for the sanding. Push, 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 and really didn't make it fun. And he probably drove a lot of people away. And my wife just hates the sanding. And that's why she doesn't really get into woodworking very much. But I have to tell you, the pieces that she has made out here have been awesome. And she should be proud of them because I think they're pretty cool. Well, as well as sewing, when it comes to clothes, my wife loves to make custom t-shirts. And she has made quite a few over the years. Um, her original ones that she used to make years and years ago, she would actually get freezer paper and an X-Acto knife and sit there for hours cutting out these stencils with a razor blade or an X-Acto knife and get it just the way that she wanted. Then she would adhere that stencil onto a t-shirt and then painstakingly with a brush, she'd paint all on the stencil using fabric medium uh, to, to solidify the paint onto those shirts. And although the results were absolutely amazing, they were very time consuming to make, but she did a wonderful job with it. Now, as of course, technology moves forward and time moves forward, you, you end up changing your methods. You just can't help doing it. And with the introduction of her Cricut machine, it has really opened up a whole new world for her. Now that world includes things like adhesive t-shirted uh, vinyl and using cheaper vinyl for stencils or instead of having to cut out those stencils with a razor blade, uh, using the Cricut machine to cut them and therefore being able to get much more intricate design with crisper, more clean lines and her t-shirt uh, making ability has really skyrocketed and some of them are just absolutely cool. So that is another thing she likes to delve into are these custom t-shirts. Now, along with the Cricut machine, and I don't have any examples of them, of course, because she gives them all away, but um, she likes to make cards. And she has done uh, just a plethora of custom greeting cards. And especially through the pandemic, when getting out to a store to purchase uh, a birthday card, say, for a relative or a friend, was just not something that was easily done. Making these cards was a great option and she did some amazing designs and uh, I'm, I'm going to have a look to see if I can find some pictures of them because they really are cool. But unfortunately at the moment I don't have any. So either way that's another thing that she likes to delve into is paperwork being making cards. And just like everything else she does, some of them are pretty darn cool. Well, another very cool craft that my wife has gotten into over the years is something called felting. And unless you've heard of it or unless you've seen it done, you really can't quite grasp the concept. I've seen it done and I still don't get the concept. But what it is, is she takes wool, um, just regular batting wool, and she has this very barbaric set of needles. They're like, um, they're, they're, they're like needles with barbs on them. And essentially what she does is she stabs and pierces this wool repeatedly. And those barbs grab the fibers and pull them together. And the more you stab it, the tighter the wool gets and the more closely knit it gets. And eventually, through stabbing it and, manip and, and manipulating it, and, and uh, it, it's really hard to describe, but the more you stab it, the more you can shape it, the more you can shape it, the more you can get animals or shapes. And she has done some incredible stuff. Um, just this, this cute little bunny centerpiece was just adorable, little bunny in his burrow. She's made little mice that sit in a flower you know, for a display piece. They're just, it's unbelievable. She even made a replica of our dog who passed away. And it's just amazing what she can do with this stuff with just some barbaric looking needles and some wool. 
one of the most, I guess, extensive pieces she's done, and one of the coolest, I'd have to say, is this. And this thing, this dragon, is just unbelievable. It really is. Uh, it's about 12 inches around. It has all kinds of colors mixed in with that red. The eyes are amazing. Uh, now, the eyes were bought. The eyes are plastic from a local craft shop. Um, but everything else, the, the wings have wires in them to hold their form. And just the way she's done it all, I don't get it. I don't get it. The way that some of you guys don't understand how I can, say, design toys or piece together wood to make things, I don't understand how she does this. Because I think if I were to, to do this, I, I'd be lucky if I could make wool out of wool because I just don't get it. But she gets it. She does an amazing job and these things are just awesome. They've won all kinds of ribbons at the local fair. Um, just amazing work. And the last craft that I want to showcase here that my wife does today is something that it never ceases to amaze me how she excels at this and the amazing products that she produces through this. And that is beading. And I don't mean beading like, you know, friendship bracelets or stuff like that. I'm talking about taking beads. Let me just show you the size of these, some of these beads. This is one on my finger. I go blind just looking at them, let alone feeding wires or strings through them. But she takes these beads and they all get stitched together using very specific type of stitchings and she ends up forming these glass bead sculptures. Uh, hummingbirds, flowers, cactuses. You, you name it, she can make it out of glass beads. It's absolutely incredible. But one of the most amazing things that she's delved into recently with these beads is making butterflies. And she takes these little itty bitty tiny beads, stitches them together with a specific stitch. I think it's called a peyote stitch. I, I may have that wrong, but it is a specific style of stitch that she had to research and learn how to do. And then through learning that, she's able to stitch these things together and make these intricate, colorful butterflies. They're, they're absolutely wild. They really, really are. Um, you can't appreciate it. These pictures that I'm showing you don't do the bead work justice. They really, really don't. Because this stuff blows my mind. And if you were to see it in person, I'm sure it would blow your mind too. And there you have it. The crafts of Kenny's wife. Guys, uh, the talent that runs through my wife's body when it comes to crafting and other things is just absolutely incredible. Um, she gets these ideas in her head and then she follows through with them with such such an aggressive manner that it's almost an obsession. And then she picks it up so easily, it seems, and then just runs with it. And although some people might look at it and say, I could never do that, I could never do that, that is part of the reason that a lot of people can't do crafts, is because they're afraid to try. And I'm telling you, my wife isn't afraid to try stuff, and I'm glad she does, because it's absolutely incredible the work she does. So, I hope you've enjoyed a little glimpse of what Kenny's wife does when it comes to crafts. Guys, I don't want you to think that, um, you know what, I'm biased. I, of course I'm biased, but honestly, this stuff is fantastic stuff, and it's won quite a few ribbons. Uh, at local fairs and contests and that sort of thing. So obviously other people think it's wonderful too. And I want to thank you guys for requesting it because it gives a great opportunity for me to showcase what she does. I'm always out here every week. I'm out here filming and showing what I do, showing you how to do things. I showcase your stuff. Why not showcase her work as well? She's been by my side for 33 years, and whether she believes it or whether she knows it or not, honestly, she's one hell of an inspiration, and 
Good gosh, what a wonderful portfolio of work she's amassed over the years. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope that you will inspire your spouse or they will inspire you as my wife inspires me. And guys, more importantly, you know what? Nothing's more important than that. Support your spouse, support their hobbies, support their, their habits, support their craft. And I'm telling you, you'll get along way better. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.